play with some knobs, shall we? So what we'll do now is um, take it apart. I've got a reamer which I shall get out, and um, if I need to, of course. I won't get it out just for the sake of it. We won't judge, we will not judge, yet. Later on, we'll judge. <laughs> Since I haven't found anything to complain about, I have, obviously. If you didn't see that, you clearly weren't paying attention or you've just skipped forward to see what my summer is like. So stop being lazy and go back and watch the actual film. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome. What have we got? I hear you ask. Well, We've got another affordable guitar. I say affordable because compared to some of those things out there, this is definitely affordable. Um, and it is a, a Tokai Love Rock, uh, obviously Les Paul knockoff. The, the actual model designation of this is UALS62 for some reason. I certainly don't know why. Um, but, uh, you know, it's known as the Tokai Tok Love Rock. I mean, Tokai Love Rocks have been around a long time. You may or may not know this. The older people, gents, I wouldn't say gents, can't say gents. Let's be inclusive on this channel. The older, all of yous out there, you might have a little fondness for Tokai in your heart there because they were the original lawsuit guitars. In the late 70s, the Japanese came along with Tokai, who are... Tokai have been making musical instruments since the 40s. So, you know, they're already a highly respected uh, manufacturer. They had, I believe they had relationships with C.F. Martin way back in the day, you know, making instruments for these people. So they were pucker. And they knew how to make guitars. So in the late 70s, they came along and started making Gibson Les Pauls better than Gibson were making them. And uh, some Fenders as well. You know, that's where the whole, you know, Gibson suing people thing started, I think. So, um, obviously, Tokai largely ignored Gibson, made a couple of changes to the headstock, and they've been in production ever since, and the Japanese ones have always been highly rated, and they're quite expensive. Now, this is not a Japanese one. The Japanese versions of this are about twice as much. They seem to be selling for around £1,200 upwards, whereas this one is made in China, under Japanese quality control, uh, they uh, are very fond of telling us. Um, but made in China, and the retail price of this seems to be around about £600. Seems to be listed um, around £585 everywhere. So it's in the same ballpark as the Epiphone and the Sire, which we've reviewed lately. So I thought we would make a brilliant um, uh, addition to that little... Um, collection so we've got a little triumvirate there if that's the word so we can do a, a, a real side by side comparison so I've had my eye on these for a while um, I was looking online I managed to establish they you know they're available in some of the smaller independent uh, dealers in the UK as far as I can tell they don't seem to be available in the in the bigger chains so um, it's nice to be able to shop in different places and uh, I've got this one from a a dealer called Dawson's in the UK. Um, you know, they seem to have a do a bit online. I don't know how big they are. Um, so no disrespect, guys, if you're massive. But the great thing about this was Dawson's were listing this as a sale item. Yes, <laughs> at just £385. So brilliant. I managed to get what I was looking for at quite a bit cheaper than I'd anticipated. So... Um, Great. In the basket, several days later, here it is on the bench, and we're talking about it. It's great. I love online shopping, guys. I mean, obviously, I've done that exclusively now for the last two years, really. And um, 
I, I'm, I'm, you know, I know some of you are a bit hesitant and say, oh no, you couldn't possibly do it. At the end of the day, you can send them back. If you don't like it, you don't have to have a reason. You just order something on a whim, you know. And if you don't like it, if you change your mind, send it back, you know. It might cost you the return postage and, you know, it might take them a few days to ret refund your money, but, well, you know. It's got to be done really these days anyway. Um, so just looking, these strings are a little bit rusty. So um, I do think this one, it's got a 20 serial number as far as I can tell. So yeah, it's been been around for a while. So it's probably why it was discounted. They probably wanted to clear it off. But there aren't many of these available. So um, presumably they're not massive sellers. <laughs> Let's find out why, shall we? Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, I know a lot of people think, oh yeah, the reputation's really good. It is obviously based on the Japanese um, models. Let's see if the Chinese models can live up to that reputation as well, shall we? Yeah. So let's get stuck in. Okay, mahogany body, maple cap, in the time-honored tradition. I can see this is made from three pieces of um, timber on the back. There's no veneer hiding that, you know. They don't feel the need to disguise that, which I prefer. As I said, maple cap. It's got a nice, got a nice carve on it. Got a nice carve on it. Quite a sparkly gold. I don't mind that. It's fairly. I've got to try and avoid throughout this film comparing them to the others because we will do a film comparing them to the Epiphone and the Sire at the very least in the not too distant future. So we'll compare the finishes, but it's a gold top. It looks it looks tall and tense, but it's like a gold top, doesn't it? Looks like a gold top. Nothing funny about that colour. That's what I'm saying. It's a gold top. Move on. Uh, neck, right, the neck. Now, the neck is um, on this made from Canadian maple, uh, they tell us in the spec sheet that I've got here that I might glance at from time to time. Um, so, yeah, Canadian maple neck. You can see um, it's got a scarf joint there and it's got a heel joint there. Canadian maple. Um, maple will give it a... probably give it different tonal characteristics than mahogany. I've got um, I've got at least one SG with a with a maple neck and I really like it. It, it feels it, I think it gives it something different. Well again we'll find out when we do the comparison which isn't going to be today. So for today it's got a maple neck. Okay, move on. Um, the fretboard on this is uh, made from uh, caramelized jatoba. Now I did a little bit of research on Jatoba because I was all, I was quite ready to dismiss it, but it's actually it's quite a highly rated alternative to rosewood, uh, more more highly rated than um, you know Indian laurel and some of the others that they're you know they they have to use since the whole you know sites regulations and um, sustainability of rosewood you know came in became an issue really, and in fact I think. This is mostly sourced from Central and Northern America uh, and, and the West Indies and those sort of places. Um, it's actually known, quite often known as Brazilian cherry. Um, so it's quite a cool, it's quite a cool looking wood and uh, apparently it sounds great as well. Uh, binding, as you can see, it's the right colour. Nice, nice off-white binding all the way around. I mean, on a QC level, I've had a, a fairly close sort of gander as I've been so far. It looks great, to be honest with you. I can't see any, I can't see any blemishes, any separation. I can't see any separation anywhere. On this, obviously, it's got a fairly thick, you know, urethane lacquer, which helps to to hide that. But it's all very smooth. Yeah, all very smooth. 
The nut is cow bone, incidentally. And obviously you can see, you can see it's not machined, you know, it's kind of a, well, I imagine it's not machined. It looks nice, it looks well cut. I've certainly had a play and it feels nice. Feels nice height. They call it the frets medium jumbo. They go as far to say as well that it is, hang on, <laughs> the frets are Sanko SBB213 medium jumbo made in Japan. So the Japanese, oh, sorry, no. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, Japan, made in Japan, yeah. So they're Japanese frets. Sanko frets. That'll mean more to some of you than it does to me. I haven't got into frets yet. I'm sure I will, but at the moment. Um, so that's probably good, isn't it? Okay. Uh, tell me if it's not. I mean, if you think Sanko SBB213 Japanese frets are rubbish, please let me know because I need to know. Okay. Because I'm suggesting that this is they're good, and they might not be. We need to know the truth. Moving on. The tuners are, are obviously, you know, reproductions of uh, the vintage Cluson tuners. They are called, they've got a part number and everything, SD800G underscore P04. That's what these machine heads are. SD800G underscore P04 made in Korea. Now, and they've got green, obviously single, single line green buttons. They are quite green on this. They're quite noticeably quite green. Uh, I'm not sure I think about that. But also, in operation, they felt different to um, they felt different to the Epiphone ones that I'm obviously used to. I couldn't really put my finger on whether they felt better or not. Um, so all I can tell you is they they feel a little bit different, and I'll I'll try and elaborate that on that later on if if I can. Okay. Basic scratch plate. There's no bevel on the edge of that, so it's got a flat edge. It all looks nice. Uh, as I said, the uh, the carve looks nice. It all looks really nice. It's a nice weight. Let's see what it weighs, shall we? Okay, here we go. Tokai Love Rock weighs... 8 pound 11 ounces. Or... 3.95 kilos. Nice weight. So what we'll do now is um, take it apart, give it a poke. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll get the strings off. We'll have a look at the pickups. Pop those up, have a look underneath there, see what's going on. Have a closer look at the hardware. Have a look inside the control cavity and the switch. And then we'll, um, we'll measure the neck. We'll measure the neck properly and um, look at the profile and um, do anything else that I've forgotten about. And um, we'll play, we'll start playing. We'll start playing now. Obviously we'll start playing after we've put the strings back on, but with the magic of editing, we'll bring some of that forward and we'll start to run the playing in now, intermingling with all the nerdy stuff, the data, to try and make it interesting really, so that you stick with it until the end. Um, I hope you do. In fact, if you're a supporter of this channel or you'd like to support this channel, I've got a, I've got a little announcement at the end, actually, something I'm quite excited about. So uh, stick around through uh, all of this stuff and um, I'll tell you a bit more about that later. But for now, yeah, let's get stuck in. Let's get the strings off and um, start work. <laughs> So 
first thing I like to do is weigh the hardware. Tailpiece is quite um, chunky, 73 grams. And the bridge is identified as B2. We've seen those before. 47 grams. And obviously that, that looks very close to the Epiphone star ones. The specs tell us that the bridge is an LS hyphen VBC. So that's an LS VBC made in Korea. And the tailpiece is a, an LS hyphen VTC made in Korea. I'm just going to grab the Epiphone bridge, see if that will go straight on. Back in a sec. Okay, so these are, so this is the Epiphone standard. Yeah, it goes straight, straight on. So that means that the Gibson bridges and all the variations made by Tone Pros and Faber and Everyone else are a straightforward retrofit. If you obviously, you know, change the posts as well, which is it's part of the process really. And um, what have we got here? We've got a lightweight Faber tailpiece. Yeah, I'm guessing that exactly the same. So that's great news because these are these are bog standard, you know, fairly cheap parts that can be improved and the sound of the guitar as we know can be improved if you wanted to upgrade those. Not that we know this, it needs a, it might not need improving, it might be brilliant, but it, you've got the option, that's what I'm saying. So that's good. So just having a, just a closer look at the frets here. They could do the bit of a clean. Um, but apart from that, the the fretwork looks really nice. They're really, really feels good. There's no, there's nothing sharp along this at all. And they look really well seated. And obviously you can see the, the fingerboard looks, looks nice. It doesn't look dry or anything, so. I might give this a treatment and um, give those a little wipe before I put the strings back on. But um, yeah, just a little bit, you know, a little bit grubby. Just a little bit grubby. So I think this is a 2020 model, so it's been sitting around for a year or so, isn't it? Two years, isn't it? Well, depending when it was made in 2020, potentially two years. So, um, okay, well, that's good, but it, it looks good and you can see the manual, you can see the manual tooling marks. I'll try and get some close up there. You can see the manual tooling marks on here that you see on Gibsons, but it's tidy. And I quite, and that's a nice kind of thing, I think, on, it's what, I think it is a nice thing about Gibson because you know that there's an element of craftsmanship in that, you know, handmadeness in that. Even though it's just someone going T -t 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 like that, you know, it probably takes them 20 seconds, but, you know, it's, I mean, my point is, this is really tidy and, and that can't always be said for Gibsons, can it? You know, there's no, I can't see any nasty, Maybe a little bit of a mark there, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. Okay, um, let's measure the pickups and then pop them up and have a look. Righty ho. So, bridge pickup 8.12 kilo ohms. Neck pickup. Ooh, 12.97. Ooh. <laughs> that was a surprise. I, I, I suppose I'm used to, let's take this plastic off. I'm used to 
on Les Pauls, those two reading broadly the same. Well, they clearly don't on this. 12.96 now, it's gone down one. <laughs> That's a temperature change, probably. And uh, yeah, 8.12 on the uh, on the bridge. Oh, it'll be interesting to see what they sound like, won't it? Okay, moving on. Let's have a look under the pickups then. See what's what. Again, I'm looking at all of the, looking at the way the pickup rings fit. It all looks really tidy. It looks really tidy, I must say. Okay, here we go. Start with the neck. Pop. The neck pickup there. As you can see, it just says neck pickups, BHC. There's an F obviously on the left there and some in the middle. BH, does it say BH? Oh, BH, yeah, probably BHC or something. Can't really make out what that says, but some of you may know. Let me know if you do, please. So there you go, that's inside the, um, the neck pickup. Not a lot to see. Nice and tidy. Very well shielded. You can't, or I can't tell a lot about the construction from that. But yeah, tidy. And there you go. Much the same. Very tidy. Very well shielded. Nice and tidy. And, um, Pickup just says uh, bridge pickups BHC. Okay, let's have a look in the control cavities. Ah, there you go. I suppose there's an element of disappointment then when you open up, you know, the control cavities and you find. They've got those, you know, little, little mini pots in. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't inspire you with confidence. But, you know, in, in, in truth, I, I don't know if they're any worse, you know, or they might even be better than the sort of CTS stuff that we're used to. Don't know how well you can see that, but the the switch just looks. I'm trying to think. How will I explain it? It looks like a kind of a a circuit board version of a switch, rather than a nice. Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about switches. Anyway, it's definitely not a switchcraft. <laughs> I know that much. Now, what can I tell you about the pots? Tiny little things, and it says, it looks like it says GY or QY on them, and they've got little, little green capacitors on them. On the tone controls, in fact, do they jump across? How are they wired then? Hmm. I don't know what's going on there, to be honest with you, but it's, um, we'll see what it sounds like anyway. We'll see what it sounds like. They might work really well, so we'll, we'll find out. We won't judge. We will not judge yet. Later on, we'll judge. Okay, let's put this back together. Bit of shielding on the back of these panels, so that's good. There you go. Right, take a pee break. Look in the 
that under the uh, truss rod cover. The Epiphone style one, isn't it? With the hex key. Nothing more to see there. So here's the neck profile of measurements at the first fret. And here's the profile in measurements at the 12th fret. It looks quite a nice kind of round C shape at, down at the 12th fret, doesn't it? So what else, what else have I noticed? Switch feels nice, feels good, feels okay. Quite nice, quite solid. Um, I think that's it. The only thing I've noticed, the um, obviously got these, you know, top hat knobs. I keep forgetting what these are called. I think these are these are the early, the early style one. I think they call these top hats, don't they? I keep forgetting. Sorry. Um, anyway, it's got them, and they're. They're quite a dark amber colour. What I noticed is they, and that explains it why. Now we've seen that it's got these mini pots inside. Imagine the shafts are quite short. And, and that means that you can see that these are, these are quite flush to the body. Um, which I noticed straight away, because normally they sit quite proud of the body because they've got a, um, I'll tell you what. Let's just go one step further. Let's just pull one off and see what see what they look like. Because I wouldn't be surprised if they're quite skinny. Don't even see. I can't even get a rag under that. This got me. Oh, this one's got, got a bit of. I found a bit of a gap. Let's get this in. Yeah, it's got a little. It's got a little nut under there. Not sure if the um, the shaft's probably a different size to the full size one, so I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if you if you wanted to change these, you might have to do a bit of um, reaming, reaming. You call it. If you ever do this, don't use an electric drill. That's stupid. You get a little hand reamer, and we'll we'll go into that another. Well, I might. You know, we'll see what they sound like. If they're rubbish. We'll upgrade them, and I'll show you what I mean. I've got a Rima which I shall get out, and um, if I need to, of course, I won't get it out just for the sake of it. Um, but I'd like to see these sit sit right, and they don't. They don't sit right for my OCD, and I'd like to see like the metal pointers under as well, because that I think they look really good on on these guitars. Anyway, I think that's it. So what I'm going to do now is um, put it back together, put some new strings on it, um, and and we'll go through the um, we'll go through the controls. So a new set of Ernie Ball regular slinkies. It's my string of choice. Um, normal uh, normal stringage stringage. I haven't top wrapped. Is what I mean. Um, because I decided not to really today. That's my only reason. I sometimes do and I sometimes don't. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail another time. But for now, yeah, that's what it sounds like unplugged. It's nice. It feels nice. I've got to say, it feels really nice. I did have to set the action up. It was really low out of the box, you know, buzzing all over the place, but it was really low, so. That's hardly surprising. So I set it to my preferred, my preferred uh, height, which is uh, I'm just had to come look because I'm doing it in millimeters now as well as um, imperial. Uh, so my preferred is uh, three sixty fourths or thereabouts on the fifteenth fret on the base side, which is, of course, as you know, around about one and a half mil. And then on the um, the treble side, one thirty tooths. Or uh, around about one mil. I got that right this time. Just get rid of that. So yeah, it feels good. It feels really good. It feels really playable. So 
amps. Right, so um, following last week's amp uh, extravaganza, I've still got out um, some of the little ones, so I'm using, I've got the Black Star Studio 10 EL34 out, and I've got the Vox AC10 alongside that. So I've actually decided to, to use two, two amps this week together. So um, they're both hooked up um, via my orange detonator pedal. Um, so let me show you what that sounds like. Um, okay, here we go. Full chat, um, no drive on, but obviously those amps have got a little bit of gain on them and I've set them to, you know, breaking up quite a bit. Neck pickup on the Black Star. So you can hear that compared to the Vox. It's more zingy. So if we put those together, we should have the best of both worlds. Let's play with some knobs, shall we? Okay, so, treble pickup. See if the volume works. Works a bit. Neck pick up. Given the tiny little things that are in there, actually, they're better than I imagined they might be. To be fair, so let's um, yeah, let's try the tones. Not fantastic, but you know, just as you, you start to think, oh, it's actually something's happening, and all of a sudden it's on 10 or 0. So, yeah, very little taper on the tone controls. But again, if you, um, you know, if you if you put some pedal on, you could coax some tones out of it, particularly with a bit of fuzz. Depending what settings you got the pedals on, they can add the brightness that you might need. If you, um, you know, as a, a good Les Paul would have, you know, really good interactive um, tone and volume controls, and you'd need to, you'd need to make that happen on this. You need to replace it. So, but that's not huge cost, is it? You know, some some fifties wire and a fifties wiring loom in this. I, I'm, I mean, I'm saying this straight away because 
I think that anyone that, that is after this sort of guitar would definitely have an eye on that. Would okay, go, well, let's, you know, because I think actually we haven't got fully into establishing what all of it's like yet, but I wouldn't mind betting that the electrics are the thing that lets it down most, probably. <laughs> So I'm feeling that the I think I'm feeling that the pickups are just kind of okay really. Here's the thing, um, if you saw the, the amp shootout, shootout, the amp thing that I did last week, I had me pedal board up there and uh, some brilliant feedback, thanks guys, really appreciate all of that. I have one, I have one comment, um, you know you are guy, um, guy he was very nice about it, but he said, what a waste of time <laughs> showing trying to show what amps sound like when it's all going through pedals. You know, he said by the time, he said basically it was a waste of time because the pedals take take all of the signal away, basically. Common sense tells us you, you're probably right that the, you know, all the, the cables and the, you know, buffering or not buffering or whatever must sap the signal a little bit, but that much, let's find out. Be, let's do a little experiment and find out how much if any, signal we lose. It might even sound better. Here we go. First of all, let's take the compressor and the delay off. So that none of the pedals are on. It's going through a, a TC poly tuner. It's going into an MXR Dynacomp, Clonk ATR, RAT, DD7, RC5 Looper, and then into the orange detonator and through. So it's going straight through those. None of them are on. And it sounds like this. Here's an E chord. And now we plug the guitar straight into the amp. No pedal chain.
Perúchain. So there you go. I'm going to obviously I need to listen to that back before I can make a, a proper judgment call on that. But it didn't sound a lot of difference here in the studio, to be honest. So uh, we'll have a listen back and then we'll, uh, we'll carry on this conversation in the comments uh, section. this I'm, I've got to say it I've got to admit I don't I don't think I expected to um, I don't think I expected to rate it as highly as I now do where do we start it's really well made it's really well made I haven't found the finish wise because I haven't found anything to complain about. I have, obviously. Um, but finish-wise, uh, QC-wise, it's, it's brilliant. I, 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 don't, I don't use that word lightly, obviously. But I haven't found any um, blemishes of workmanship-wise on the... Um, the body and the neck, the fretboard, the way it's made. Playability wise, it's really nice. It's really nice. It just feels really comfortable to play, to be honest with you. It, and it sounds it sounds really nice. You can, it's got this real nice snap to it open, as you heard. And it, um, it plays really well. I like to think that that was reflected in my playing today. Might not be, it might be as rubbish as normal, but you know, I can dream, can't I? Um, but what I will say is, uh, I was, I said earlier that I was a little bit suspicious about the tuners. Well, now that I've actually used them, really, now that I've used them, I can report that they're, they're absolutely fine. They feel great. And obviously I've restrung the guitar and used them to tune it up and stretch the strings. And uh, it's fine, it, it holds its tune fine and they operate fine. Um, I said earlier that I'm really impressed with the nut. You know, it's got a proper cowbone nut on this, and you can see um, from looking at it, that it's it's cut really well. So yeah, it look, I mean, it look, it looks great, doesn't it? And it and it and it plays absolutely great, and it sounds great. So the criticism is, yeah, the electronics again they let it down and the pickups I suspect they're not the best we won't know really until we compare it to the the Epiphone which has got the Pro Buckers in it and the Sire which has got the Larry Pauls in it or whatever they're called um, and we'll get a proper um, a proper idea then of, of how good these are they're you know, they're kind of nondescript, aren't they? So we don't, or I don't know anything about these. I'm sure there are some of you guys out there that know exactly what they are. So please tell us, tell us what you think of these pickups. Um, if you saw the, you know, the shots I did of the, the backs of them earlier in this film, um, tell us what they are. If you didn't see that, you clearly weren't paying attention or you've just skipped forward to see what my summary is like. So stop being lazy and go back and watch the actual film. And uh, tell us what we need to know. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I really like this. I really like it. I'm really glad I bought this. And um, I'm gonna <laughs> gonna take the plastic off the pit guard because my intention is uh, to to do something with this, to enjoy it for a while. I can see little mod project. I could see another little mod project coming 
coming along with this um, in due course. I know we've got a few, got a few waiting in the wings. We'll have to get on on with some of these, I think, in the in the near future. Now, I said earlier I had an announcement. Here it is. I'll try and keep it brief. I know I'm not very good at that. Um, so I've been trying to find a way to uh, keep this channel free of sponsorship, uh, people giving me free stuff to review favorably and all that sort of nonsense. I'm not really into that because uh, I want to remain independent. And also a lot of people have been asking me uh, how they can help support the channel. Do I have a Patreon page? Uh, tip jar, that sort of stuff, uh, and and I don't, and uh, and I'm uncomfortable, again, receiving money without, you know, giving something back in return. I can't offer more content because it takes me all week to make these films as it is. So, you know, I can't offer all behind the scenes and all that stuff because I just don't have time to do it. So anyway, my solution is this. Um, I've launched a subscription channel uh, to run alongside YouTube. Nothing will change here, but all of this content... You can also watch it on my new subscription channel. Um, that will cost a small subscription. Obviously, that's the key with the word subscription. Oh, no, it's not actually because it didn't cost you on YouTube, does it? But OK, a paid subscription channel, $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year to subscribe to my new pay subscription channel. And what I give back is that you'll be able to watch all the content without any adverts in it, okay? So, uh, yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, um, look at the link in the description box below. Uh, there's a posting about it in more detail in the community section. It's down there, I think. And um, the links are there and stuff, but it's uh, theguitaristas.vhx.tv basically, and it's, a, you know, it's on the Vimeo OTT service, so it's a proper professional setup. It's a 30-day free trial, and then if you want to carry on, $4.99 a month. And you'll be helping support us and keep all the shit sponsorship messages off, basically. So uh, if that's of interest, do it. If it's not, ignore it, because I'm going to be here every week on YouTube anyway. It's just you'll have to sit through some annoying adverts, so... Suit yourself, really. You know, do what do what suits you. There are options. That's what I'm saying. So let me know what you think. Uh, comments below, as always. Always love to hear your feedback. And uh, and of course, now on the new pay channel, we'll call it the pay channel for now. On on the pay subscription channel, you can also leave comments. And there's also a forum section on there. So we might be able to. I can get get the community a little bit more involved, I think, in, in you know, in chats and threads and stuff like that that they have on forums. So um, if you want to check it out, it's a 30 day free trial. Look at the links and uh, check it out. And, it, and if you don't, it's not for you, you cancel it any time. You don't have to pay for 30 days. So um, if you don't like it, just cancel it. And um, I don't mind, you know, I'm happy for you to do that. That's the whole point of a 30-day free trial. If you like it, you carry on and I keep your money. If you don't, come back here. I mean, ideally, you'd all sign up to the subscription, the pay subscription channel and carry on watching on YouTube anyway because it's it's not more convenient. It's no different, really. It's the same thing. You just click on your computer and there I am. But um, look, whatever works for you works for me. So that's all I'm saying, really. So uh, should we just leave it there? I think so. Thanks again for watching, for putting up with me. And hopefully I'll see you again next week, wherever you decide to watch me. All right. Take care. Shut up. Yeah.